Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. Sunday Orchid Chat today. Um, news and stuff first. There isn't much. <laughs> you had a sort of newsy update the other day, so yeah. not much left for today. Um, what I will say though is there's still some Halloween mugs if you're interested in that. Um, I've just spent nearly an hour messing about as combination of the merchandise site which is Teespring which is now known as Spring, YouTube and its overseer Google something has gone wrong and I've changed every single setting, changed them back, I've done everything I possibly can and the merchandise store that shows under the videos for me has gone missing. However if I completely log out of YouTube and my Google account and then come back in on Google, go to YouTube and search for my channel and look at a video, the merchandise store's there. So the person who owns it can't see it, but all the people from outside can. So I don't know whether you as individuals can see the merchandise store under the video, obviously if you can see the description in the first place. but. Um, what you can do is, um, if it's not showing under the individual videos, if you go to my main channel page, my home page, um, along the banners, one of the items is store. If you click on that, that will always work. And that, that shows all the merchandise then. But um, we haven't reached the um, limited edition yet, so there's still some available. And there would still be time to get them for Halloween. So if you're interested in the um, Halloween mug, um, I'll put a link at the end to the video where I promoted it, um, in case you haven't seen it. Um, but I don't promote the merchandise, it's there for you to go and look at, should you choose to do so. I did notice that the company that owns the store, Teespring, or Spring as it's known now, have had to put up a lot of the prices, and they seem to have automatically put up my prices without my permission by an arbitrary amount um, because the cost of the goods and their production and everything has gone up like everything else in the world and there were items on the store that would have been sold at a loss which they don't allow so they've automatically put some of the prices up. Um, so the price you will pay is the price you get to on the store not necessarily what YouTube displays. They could be different messing me about. <laughs> Nothing's ever simple is it? Um, so that's that out of the way. Um, Lawrence Hobbs had an open weekend. He was open to the public at his nursery yesterday and again today and I thought about going and then I thought it's a flipping long way for a nursery that probably hasn't got much that I want. <laughs> and he'll be at our show in a few weeks time if I fancied something off of his plant list. Um, I could always pre-order it and he'll bring it to the show, so that save the drive all the way to his place then. Um, so that's that. Um, that show is the last Sunday of the month, so it's a while yet. So, um, And it's the Orchid Society I'm treasurer of. I will be able to film, we will get a video of the show. So, uh, unlike the other one. Um, so that's that. What other news have we got? Not a lot really. I'm hoping to, weather permitting, so I'm not doing this in rain, I'm hoping to get the timber this week to make my bonsai staging. Um, the actual making of the staging I'll film, it'll be for the bonsai channel, but you know, I'll, you know, I'll let you know on the Orchid channel that that's going on if you want to see me sawing up wood and drilling holes and screwing things together and um, beeping out the language that goes with that sort of activity. There's always something that goes wrong. <laughs> but once the staging's done, I can do an awful lot of tidying up and clearing of the garden to make it look much better. Not the hacking down the bushes, that's a separate thing. Um, and I'll be organising that soon as well. So I've got no new blooms at the moment, so there's no new blooms to show you. Um, you coming in or staying out? You don't know what you're doing today, do you? It's been raining since I got up. So um, both the cats have sort of gone to go out and then decided against it and come back in again. But Mojo's 
been out for the last 10 minutes or so, he's decided he's had enough now. Hopefully he's done his duties out there, which is the, from my point of view, that's the whole point of him going out there. It's not for fun. <laughs> Good job to do. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> um, yeah, so we've got no new blooms. Um, nothing's come into spike that I've noticed that wasn't before. Um, no, so there's nothing on that front to have a look at. So um, the object today was to look at the potted catlias and have a chat about those. Um, their, rate, their rate of and if they're recovering from their ordeal, um, the root saga. And um, I mean there are a couple of catlias I've bought since then, so they're nothing to do with that. Um, but we'll have a look and see what's growing and what's not and have a chat about you know what what perhaps you ought to think about again going into winter if you're growing in the home going into winter uh, tends to have the opposite <laughs> to somewhere like this out here because in the home quite honestly as you go into winter you start firing up the heating and thing you, you don't get the drop in temperature that people with greenhouses and things might get um, depends on how much they want to pay for their heating. Um, yeah, so it's a sort of slightly different thing. But the, the, the one thing everybody will probably get, um, if, if you're away from the equator in any shape or form, is the drop in day lengths and potentially the drop in light levels within those day lengths. So you could be getting, as you're heading to winter, much shorter days, more dull days than bright days, you're going to get a lot less light and some catlia types will respond to that by they'll just stop growing yeah so they'll do that if they get too cold as well both and they're pretty certain to stop growing right so i'll move the camera around so that we're on the workbench and we'll get these plants out one at a time just have a quick chat about them look them over um <laughs> the last time they were watered i used the sprayer which i I decided I wasn't going to do, but I was in a hurry. Um, so I didn't look at them. So things may have happened. New growths may have rotted since then. I don't know. Anyway, we'll move the camera around. So seasick time. Oops. Somewhere about there, perhaps. And down a bit. So the thing is, I want to be able to put the... Actually, I'm... Am I going to do it that way? Yes, I'm actually going to take the camera off and hand hold it. Which means, while I'm getting a plant, I'll have to put it down. But what I'll do is, um, I'll get two or three plants at once, and we'll, I'll hand hold the camera, and we'll have a look at those, and then I'll shut down, get rid of those, get a couple more, and we'll go through it that way. Because I can do a lot better job hand holding the camera than I can, you know, when it's three foot away. We can go in and have a look at close ups and things. So I'll shut down and get the first few um, on the bench ready to look at. Okay, it's the first three. A lot of these are not going to have tags on them. Um, Right, this one, um, there's two plants in there, one here and one there. This one pushed up a nice new growth, which has promptly failed, it's rotted. Um, there's very few roots on that plant. This one has a new growth that looked like it was going to rot, and then it carried on growing. So that one might make it. Um, this is technically a bifoliate, because I can see one... Um, pseudo bowl with two leaves on. I'll have a word about that in a minute. Right, so that's that one not doing very well at all. This one may make it, it may not, because it's trying to recover, trying to grow in not in the best time of year. So that's that one. This is one of the serious recoveries that um, is probably it might make it but it's going to be a painful process. This is the latest new growth and it is a sort of sensible new growth, but it hasn't combined it with roots. So that is still virtually rootless, that catlia. It's got virtually no roots at all. That's on the borderline whether that one will make it. Okay, it's got a new growth, but without ro roots. It's not totally desiccated. The oldest two came, uh, bulbs are. Well, this one's not totally shriveled, so there is a little bit of 
stored energy in there but not a lot so that may or may not make it and then this one one of the other recoveries Chantilly lace um, this has grown a new growth and success it's, in fact it's grown two new growths it's pushed this one out and this one tends to have um, three leaves so that's odd most Cattleya pseudo bulbs have either one leaf or two you very rarely get three but this one does have three so it's got something in it um, that's got more leaves than normal for a Cattleya type but this has grown a few roots and it's successfully put up a spike. It's a poor spike, it's only got two blooms. But at least I now know what that one is. <laughs> right, now, Cattleyas with two, and occasionally more leaves, bifoliates, are far more sensitive to root disturbance than their single leaf, leaf relatives. Now I don't know why that is. I really don't. And that's based on experience of really complex hybrids back to sort of primary crosses back to individual species it seems to go across the range and it's far far more important to get the timing right on these when you disturb the roots to repot or to take it out of the pot and put it on a mount or vice versa but if you're going to disturb the roots you need to do it at a point when the roots are active yeah so when there are signs of new growth uh, new roots pushing out get it done basically don't get those let those roots get too big yeah because as they grow they will acclimatize to whatever they come in contact with and if you change it they're sensitive to the change and the disturbance so make sure you get it done when those roots are really young and take extreme care because when they're small like that, they will break off just by looking at them. <laughs> so go very, very careful. But it's worth taking the time and the trouble to get that right for the bifoliates. They just seem far more sensitive. So that's a word about them. Um, all sorts, um, as I said, from species to primary crosses right through to the really complex hybrids. Um, where you'll have a job to even find out its name, let alone where, you know its makeup, its heritage, um, and all that sort of stuff. But um, if you can go back and have a look and see what went into it, you get more of a clue. Um, but once you get into the complex hybrids, you've probably moved away from the need for any rest. But like all orchids, if an orchid isn't growing in any shape or form, no new roots coming, no bulbs growing or maturing, no flower spikes pushing out, it's effectively doing nothing, then you have to stop and ask yourself, what's it going to do with all that feed and water I'm chucking all over it? So stop doing it. <laughs> Wait until it needs the feed and the water. Now obviously even in a state where there's no growth, a small amount of water is still required to stop the plants desiccating. Yeah. But apart from that, wait till you see something. <laughs> I always remember in a film once, somebody said when, I think it was the terrorists, the naughty people, when do we start shooting? When you can see something to shoot at. <laughs> I think somebody was getting cross at that point. <laughs> anyway, on to the next three. Okay, next three. Um, <laughs> I think I'm almost going to rest my case about the bifoliate soon. You'll get the picture. This a while back was declared defunct and was probably going to get thrown away and then there was a sign of a growth um, and that growth has some roots starting. Um, there's virtually no backup for this growth because these are desiccated badly and the leaves have lost their colour so they're not feeding the plant. So that little growth is all on its own. Its predecessor failed. So this, this was the, an attempt at putting a new growth out and it just died. It's now having another go. If it can get, it doesn't matter whether that gets to full size, if it can open the leaves, it can start feeding itself. And then it can start working on growing some roots as well. So um, again, <laughs> more than one leaf on the pseudo bulb is probably going to cause you a problem. Now this one, this has actually got a name. Ah, now this is a relatively recent purchase, so this is not 
suffered from the um, root problem with the bleach treatment. Um, this was one I bought not too long ago. <laughs> I'm not going to try and say that. <laughs> you can read it yourself. Uh, not enough coffee to start doing big long words like that. So this is a relatively new plant um, and it wasn't in bad nick when I got it but it didn't have good roots. The roots were pretty poor and the older part of the plant was quite desiccated. This part, this is a very desiccated pseudo bulb. Yet again a bifoliate but we managed to mature a growth with two leaves and they're nice leaves those are quite nicely feeding the plant and since then it's pushed up another gro a growth which is coming up through the middle of the plant and it's now done roots this one's fine <laughs> simple as that nothing more to say about that I don't I haven't seen the blooms on that but that was chosen by looking at pictures so I know I'm going to like the blooms when I eventually see some. It's remotely possible this new latest growth could bloom. I don't know. I might have, might have to wait for the next one. But at least it's growing. It's doing something. Um, this one, we will find out what it is if and when it manages to bloom. Now, I can't remember whether I've stuck two plants in here or one. I think it's... I think it's one, but it's with two leads. Now we're back to a single leaf type pseudo bulb now. They tend to be larger, not always, they tend to be larger for a start. And um, I have found that some of the single leaf bulbs are a little more sensitive to getting sun on them. They'll burn quicker than the bifoliates, but that's not always the case. That's interchangeable, it's probably plant specific. Um, so the lead up this end, um, it's, it's strange because if you follow it through the rhizome here, you've got this one, that's got a nice leaf on it, then we've got this one, that's got a nice leaf on it, and then we've got this one that's shriveled and hasn't got any leaves. Well, what happened there then? <laughs> but it's pushed one out the side, which has grown a few roots. And it's, again, a reasonable leaf. So the left-hand side of the plant, looking at it, doesn't look too bad. The right-hand side was weaker, and the last growth was small. Not shriveled, but small. But now it's starting a new one. Yeah. So we, we've got a growth maturing on one lead, and a new one starting on the other one. Plus we've got good root activity going on. So this one will be fine. And once it gets to the point where it can actually produce some blooms, we might find out what the hell it is. <laughs> the thing is, um, when I haven't got a tag on a plant and I throw it away, I can't take it out of my notes, can I? Because I don't know which one it is. And the same applies, so there's, so there's probably cattleya types in my notes that I don't possess anymore, they're gone. But I've also got some that haven't got tags that I've still got and I, d I don't know that I've still got them. <laughs> so I'm just waiting for each one in turn to come into bloom. Like the Chantilly Lace we saw in the, in the last set of three. Now that that's bloomed I know what it is. And I've got a feeling that this is the other piece. Because I've got a feeling it's split in two when I tried to re rescue it. So this may well be the other one. Because if you can see it has actually got three leaves. And this one looks like it's going to have three leaves. So that might be the other piece, but I'm not going to label it until I'm certain. So um, fine and recovering nicely. Just about going to make it, probably, maybe, perhaps. <laughs> right, now we're getting on to the bigger stuff. And I think everything else has actually got a tag on it. So um, yeah, it's not too bad. Um, now this is the one that has the lovely red flowers, the cluster flowers. And... Um, this partly suffered from the root issue, but it got away with it. So it did lose quite a few of its roots, but not the total root system. So it didn't fail completely and have to recover from scratch. Um, now this one has a very strange growth habit because the length of the rhizome between the bulbs is virtually zero. <laughs> Consequently, all the bulbs are really close together and it grows bolt upright. It never needs tidying because, you know, you get cat <laughs> they hang out sometimes. And then you knock everything over trying to pick it up because they're so sturdy. Um, but this is the latest growth. It's got two leads on it. This is the latest growth here. 
um, previous growth over here. This is growing on quite nicely and it has got a sheath which means it will probably bloom. Um, it's certainly big enough. Now the other lead did produce a new growth. It's not full size. It has got a sheath. It's potentially possible it'll put up a weak spike in there, but I don't think it will, quite honestly. But this one may well do. And there is a little bit of root activity. This plant has never ever grown a decent root system in all of its life. All the time I've had it, it messes about. It puts a few roots out and a few older ones branch, but it, it never seems to put out a good strong root system. Um, but on the other side, I've only just noticed, where the weaker shoot is with the sheath that probably won't produce buds, there's actually another new growth. So that, that lead is going to be successful. So that's pushing on. So that's okay, that one. Now this one is one of our project orchids. We looked at it a while ago and it, it's looking poorly. It's not a happy plant at all, um, but it does have new growths. It's two plants, two entirely separate plants in here. And this plant here has got a, a reasonably strong new growth coming out and roots. So this piece will be okay eventually. Um, but at the moment it's supported by this leaf, this leaf which is still green, and this one which is half green. Um, so it, it hasn't got, oh, actually this one's part of that plant as well, well that leaf's going yellow, so that's going to drop. And so is this leaf and that's probably going to drop. These yellow spots are where they've been bitten, where it's had scale, see like there. I mean, okay, that's a dead one, but that's, that had already done the damage. It's all very well being dead now, but once the damage is done, it's done. They don't get better. <laughs> uh, anyway, so we've got a, a good new growth on this lead here. The other plant is much smaller. Um, it has produced a new growth. It's not going to get to full size. That's, that's it. I doubt if it's going to grow any more from there. So all I can hope with that one is that the next growth that comes out on this little plant is more successful than this one. But the plant's going to make it. I mean, that virtually lost all of its roots, that one. So it's coming back, but it's probably two years at least off blooming and maybe three. So I wonder why I bother even keeping it, quite honestly, <laughs> since it's a large plant and it's in the way. Now, this is an odd ball. Um, this is my apple blossom, Ivanagara apple blossom, and I know it's called something different now, but I don't care. That's what everybody knows it as, so I'm sticking to it. Now this did split into two leads, but um, one of them produced a growth that was, I think pathetic is a suitable word. So this, this lead here looks like it's failed because the bulb behind, behind it's lost its leaves as well. Um, so we have to wait and see what's going to happen with that. But the other lead, the other side, has got a nice strong new growth. Now why I say this is an odd ball is because this can produce bulbs with one leaf, two leaves, or three. And I remember somebody putting in a comment that they had a bulb with four leaves. So it seems to please its flipping self. I suspect it's to do with its internal strength, the overall strength of the complete plant and how much energy it can put into the latest growth to decide whether it's going to have one, two, three or four leaves. Uh, but we, we will get blooms on this. Um, the other lead may recover in time. Um, again, this plays around with roots. It produces them now and again. Um, I mean, the latest growth over there has produced some new roots. They have gone down in the pot. But um, it's not a major success, the root system on this one. But it's doing okay. It's due a repot in the not-too-distant future. But, but the bark's still hard. You know, it, it's, it's, it's not worth disturbing it, quite honestly, if the bark's still okay. Right, there's two more to go, and I've just about got room to get them on there. So we'll get the last two down. 
right, and the last two. This plant here um, gives gives the appearance of being very tatty. Um, a leaf was cut here. I think that was done before I got it. This leaf was damaged and the damage has got worse. Th this bit I'm touching now is soft. So I'm actually going to cut that off in a minute, like now. It's soft. Oh, well, there's your reason why. That's scale and that's an outbreak. Look, it's over the whole leaf. So that leaf's coming off, the whole thing. It's the easiest way to get rid of them when they're like that. Um, this leaf is sort of okay, a bit patchy. This one over here is fine. And then we've got the latest growth, which is pushed up nicely. It's produced some roots okay, um, quite a lot. They don't look very good, but they're functional. They're working okay. They're not actively growing at the moment. That's why they don't look so good. They were, they all had little green tips on, but they seem to have, you know, that might, that, this might be a warm grower. You know, I don't know, but it has got a sheath and it's highly likely that a spike will form in that sheath and if it blooms, um, which it may well do, it'll be a first time bloomer. Again, that was chosen off a list, so I chose that because I like the blooms. So, um, Taiwan Good Life Big Wilson, that one is these names. Trouble is there's so many Cattleya hybrids the names are having to get longer and longer to make them unique. <laughs> uh, right so that's that one and then the last one is my Lelia Anseps. Now this has currently got three leads. Um, I've got this one here with the spike showing so that one's pushing on nicely and then this one tucked away under this leaf. I don't see a spike on that one yet but that doesn't mean to say it won't produce one. And then the other growth around the back of the plant, the spikes showing on that as well. So we've got at least two spikes on this. And this will probably have to be its last year in this pot. Um, because when it produced this growth last time round, um, it was on the edge of the pot. And I, I, I was almost going to repot it there and then. And then I saw the new growth sticking out the side. I thought, well... As it's coming out the side, any roots it produces, the chances are they are going to go in the pot, so we'll leave it be for now. And then over this side, this lead came out with plenty of room to get its roots down in the pot, and the same with this one. But the next two new growths on here, depending on where they point, you know, if they come out there and there, it could stay in the pot. Um, but if it comes out here, it's going to go over the edge. Um, now you could say that if some roots go over the edge of the pot it's not the end of the world because some of them will go aerial, some of them will probably attach to the pot and some might still go down on the inside of the rim of the pot. So is that that bad? Well it doesn't seem it until you start thinking about one day you're going to have to get it out of the pot and then your latest part of the root system has got aerial roots, they're not going to like going in the pot. That's a change of circumstances, change of environment, and that will often knock the roots down. So that's what often kills roots, it's the change, yeah? And you've also got some stuck to the pot. <laughs> so when you do come to repot it, you may have a problem. So um, getting it done, you know, beforehand might be a good thing. Um, Lelio anseps species, single leaf pseudo bulbs, and um, relatively, relatively vigorous as uh, Cattleya types go. Um, and it can often split, a lead can often split into two. So they can bulk up relatively quickly compared with some others. Some Cattleyas will only ever produce one bulb and they'll never split. Now some of that will probably be its care and its environment is not quite right. Because a Cattleya that's vigorous and everything's right for it, it's in a real happy zone, is highly liable to split. And then the split will split again. So if you, if you do an annual progress, you know, the first time a lead splits, that year you get two new growths. The next year, potentially, you get four. Three or four. But you might still only get two. Um, and it's often an indication that, that the, cat, the, the particular plant is not right smack in the middle of a perfect happy zone. It's something's not quite right. And that could be not quite enough light. 
so it's not photosynthesizing perhaps as well as it should do therefore it hasn't got quite so much food as it requires because these plants I know they haven't got a brain as such but they have an internal mechanism that decides what to do next based on what it is currently like so it looks at its reserves and thinks have I got enough strength now to bloom no right we need more green we need more greenery and we need more roots so we'll put a growth up yeah and then it'll do it again and it'll keep revising itself until at some point it thinks I'm strong enough now to bloom the exception to that is when it thinks it's dying <laughs> and then it might bloom anyway <laughs> last resort to produce seed and stop the line failing completely um, and that is used as a trick on some types of orchids Phalaenopsis the complex hybrids it's, it's often used with those you know they're nice happy zone they're nice and warm not too bright light happy you know suitable um, humidity right day length everything's great and everything's fine and the, ha the plant's happy and you're in your third year and you still haven't had a spike <laughs> chuck it in the cold so you actually threaten it what you're doing is you're actually threatening its well-being by taking it into a an environment that's not right and you know the easiest one to do is to drop the temperature obviously and perhaps reduce the light a bit and suddenly the plant's not as happy as it was but it's a strong healthy plant it'll bloom you've tricked it basically <laughs> you fooled it into thinking it might die now, it doesn't always work with some plants they will carry on and die anyway <laughs> anyway that's a look at my uh, tatty looking objects I won't say I've got a good collection of cat leaves because I haven't um, you know the the, the uh, escapade you know trying to get rid of the scale with the bleach treatment which I did wrong I mean some people have used that quite successfully and others have failed miserably and I was one of those but I didn't do it properly I I got it wrong basically and knocked my cat leaves for six and this is what's left basically I've added a couple of new ones in as time has gone on I will still do the same if I'm at a show or something and I see a Catlia bloom poking out the top of a display that I like the look of and it's for sale and it looks like a good plant and it's got a decent root system I might get some more but um, you know I've got the light here I've got no excuse I've got the light I haven't got the heat I used to have, but I've got the light. <laughs> and some Cattleyas prefer it a little cool. Um, Lelia Anseps would prefer to be cooler than hot, you know, but it still needs its bright light. Uh, I mean, I made that mistake one year and didn't get any blooms at all. I thought, right, this was in the old place where I had the extractor and the inlet fan. And obviously the inlet fan was pulling in cool air. So I thought, right, we'll put Lelia Anseps anseps down near the cool air and see if we can keep it a bit cooler and it should be happier well it grew nicely it was very happy but it lost its light and didn't bloom <laughs> make one thing better and one thing worse so yeah gotta go careful but a bit of trial and error now and again sometimes is all you can do with cattleya types because you've got a complex hybrid and even if you went back to the species that are in there they're long since forgotten the, pl the plant has no real memory of them. It's not going to perform that way. Um, I mean, if you take Lelia purpurata, it needs a distinct rest. You know, after the bulbs have matured and it's formed its sheath, if you're lucky and get a sheath, it's supposed to rest and then the spike starts later. Yeah? And I think that's geared up to... Um, <clears throat> it grows during the season on into the start of winter and then it thinks to itself, it's evolved to sort of say... Well, there's no point producing blooms now. The insects aren't around. It's winter time. It's gone cold. You know, it's a, let's, let's wait. Let's have a rest and not do anything. And then we'll push our blooms out when the, you know, when the pollinators are about again. Uh, and that's, that's the way it performs. Well, if Lelia purpurata is buried in a cross, that cross may well not need that rest and the, and the buds will come straight out, you know. The other thing you will get is, we keep talking about a sheath, um, not a sheet, a sheath, and um, not all cattleyas do that, and some of them do it sometimes and not others, but some will stick their spike straight out the top of the bulb with no sheath at all, 
Others produce a sheath followed relatively quickly by buds like this one is. I can see the shadow of the buds in there already and it's still green. Others produce a sheath and the sheath dries right out and goes brown and the buds come later so they do vary quite a bit and I've had a cattleya with two leads in the past, one that I've no longer got, that on one of the leads it produced a big sheath and on the, <laughs> on the other lead that grew at the same time, roughly the same pace, it pushed the bud straight out with no sheath at all. That was on the same plant. But again, complex hybrid. You know, the genetics can get a bit messed up when you keep doing that to plants. And it doesn't, doesn't really know. I mean, it's like they forget what, what, what are they supposed to be. You know, are they supposed to grow one leaf, two or three? They get in a muddle. So uh, anyway, under normal circumstances, cattleyas in the main need good light they don't like to get cold, um, they can take a bit of cool, they can take heat, they can take bright light, but they are sensitive to sunlight. Quite a few of them will burn pretty easy if the actual sun gets on them. They can take the bright light, but not the direct sun. And some, where they grow in the wild, are in full sun. And yet, in cultivation, if you do that to them, they burn. So, you know, it must be something to do with the quality of the air or air movement or both, you know. I mean, there's another thing, if you think about it, um, is elevation. You know, the higher up you go, the thinner the air gets. So that could have an effect on the, the way it, you know, affects the leaves, the sunlight. Anyway, that'll do for today. Look at the cat ears and chat about them. And um, I don't class these as difficult orchids. Um, what can be difficult is getting a good one to start with and therein often lies the problem is not getting a good one to start with and you, you bring it home and it's already a rescue plant and I've had quite a few that I bought like that you get them home and you sort of have a look at them and you think that's got a lousy root system that's going to take a while to get going again you know, so you're starting with a recovery instead of starting with a, a fit, healthy plant with a good root system that's in relatively new media and doesn't need repotting for quite a while, in which case it's got plenty of time to acclimatise to your environment and settle down. And then when you come to disturb it, to repot it, it's not quite such a drastic thing to have to do. If you think, if a plant's left a nursery in the Far East, which is where these tend to come, uh, no these are Americas aren't they? So it's, 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 it's left its nursery say in you know Ecuador something like that and a nursery in the States has imported it so it's now it's left one environment and gone to another one. It's changed hemispheres, it's changed its growing environment and all stuff like that and then you buy it and bring it home and give it another shock and those shocks are relatively close together yeah so the plant's gone downhill just by the nature of how it got to you. So uh, if you're going to buy cattleyas, try and make sure you get a good one. You know, if there's four or five of the same type and it's one that you want, have a good look and find that best one. And that's not necessarily the one with the most blooms on. <laughs> it might be the one where the blooms have just gone over. The blooms will come again. They'll only come again if you've got a good plant and you can look after it and keep it going and keep, keep it strong. So there we go, and uh, I'll see you next time. That will do for today. <laughs> Bye for now. Oh, um, oh, I can't be bothered. I was going to say, <laughs> it's Sunday. I will do the thank you for the subscribers and the thank you for the patrons. Um, and it, it is necessary because these are the people supporting the channel. If you're a new subscriber, thanks a lot. It, it all helps build the channel and keep it going. So uh, thanks a bunch for that. And for those that have gone across and subscribed to the Bonsai channel, big thank you for that as well. <laughs> Some people have gone across there and got interested. Sorry. <laughs> so some people have now got another hobby that's actually, an, it can be quite an expensive hobby as well. <laughs> Uh, just on that subject, somebody has offered to buy me a tree for my birthday. Now, I don't publicise my birthday, but a, a few people managed to get hold of it a few years ago when I was coming up to 70, and lots of people contributed and bought me a Burnham's voucher, 
which I took great delight in going down and spending. <laughs> um, but this particular person wants to buy me a tree. So um, I think the idea is, if I can organise it, is to go to a bonsai nursery and pick a tree out. Um, but obviously that'll be on the bonsai channel. But, uh, um, anyway, so thanks for visiting. Thanks for dropping by and all that sort of stuff. And um, see you next time.